Okay, so the next step on this uh, building out this Tika here is we're going to put the new barrel onto the uh, onto the action. So what I have here, what I decided to go with is I wanted a uh, 22250 Remington, and because um, this is going primarily going to be a, a prairie dog gun, so I don't really even care how heavy it is. Um, in fact, the heavier the better, it reduces recoil and makes watching your uh, prairie dog explosions a little bit easier. Uh, this particular barrel is from uh, Urban Rifleman. I believe he's out of Tul Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, this is my first Urban Rifleman barrel. Um, people seem to like them, so I'm going to try it out. Uh, I did already scope this with the bore scope, and it's, uh, like it's not perfect. It's not like you would expect with a... Uh, with like a Bartland or a Benchmark or a Krieger or, you know, one of those, you know, top tier cut rifle barrels, but it does look pretty darn good. And, um, of course it was significantly cheaper than those, uh, those other barrels. So I went, he offers both a shouldered prefit for Tika's and also a barrel nut option. I went with the barrel nut just because I don't know. I feel like that way I'm in control of setting the headspace and I can get it exactly how I want it. Um, the shoulder prefits I, I've heard are also great. So, oh, this particular one is, this is in a heavy, I think it's a heavy varmint contour. And you can see it's, it's pretty darn thick and it weighs a ton. Um, it's, this one's 24 inches long. Of course it's threaded. 5 8 by 24 on the muzzle, and uh, oh, it's a, it's a 1 in 12 twist. I know that, you know, fast twist barrels are the thing, all the rage these days, but for this particular barrel, I knew for sure, because I've had success with it for so many years, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be shooting the 53 grain VMAX, and 1 in 12 is plenty for that. So that's why I went with that. I'm um, not going to be shooting anything heavier, I don't think. And going with that slower twist rate, maybe will give me a little bit better velocity than shooting that same bullet through like a, a 1 and 8 twist. So a couple things we need to do here with the barrel nut option is we need to be able to keep the barrel still and we need to be able to keep the action still while we torque this barrel nut. Um, one thing you may have noticed is I put some uh, nickel anti-seize on the barrel threads. That's just to make sure that I can get it off again when I, get, when I shoot it out. And all I'm doing here is I'm just going to spin the barrel, or sorry, spin the receiver onto the barrel. And I'll get it a ways on there. And I've already kind of test fitted this a little bit. And this tape on here is just to protect the action. I'm going to put the, the action wrench on there. So I'm going to get it, I don't know, in there a ways. And then I'm going to be using my go gauge. This is, uh, you can see this is a 22250 Remington go gauge. And I have my bolt. I've removed the plunger ejector. So that doesn't interfere with my headspace measurements, but um, leave the extractor in there. It should clip right in there. So what I'm going to do is put the uh, the go gauge in there, and put the bolt in, and lock it. Oh, I'm already too far. Let me back her off. There. Should be able to lock this bolt down into into battery, and then I can just. Um, twist on the action until it comes to a stop and you can see my barrel nut is still way off here so it's, it's not hitting that it's actually the shoulder of that uh, go gauge is hitting the um, uh, well the shoulder inside the barrel right, in the in the chamber which is exactly what we want and we want it right about here just where it touches and now I'm gonna I left my barrel kind of loose in here. At least I think I did. Yep, I can spin it a little bit. That's just so I can now, now that I have it 
really close to where I want it, I can spin it to whatever orientation works best for, um, you know, using the, the action wrench. And now that I, now that I'm here, all I really have to do is spin this thing tight and tighten it down. Of course, I need to hold this action in place so it, when I tighten the, the nut, it doesn't move the action with it. And I could use a number of things. Um, I think I'm probably just going to use this adjustable wrench to get it close. And I'm going to pull my gauge out and this brown nut's getting a little bit scarred up. I'm going to paint it at some point anyway, but I'm just going to put some tape on there to kind of protect it. So you could just use a crescent wrench, tighten her down good, call it a day. Um, I actually somehow had a, so this is for an, got an AR stoner uh, handguard, which also comes with a barrel nut for, for an AR-15. And I, you know, I used it to put the barrel nut on that thing. But I'll be darned if it's not the exact perfect fit for this particular uh, barrel nut. I think I measured it as about 30 millimeters. But it's perfect for that. And the nice thing about that is now I can lock my torque wrench into there and I can torque this to a specific value. For this type of thing, probably not critical. I could just, you know, ham it on there tight and call it a day. It's certainly, no matter what I do, it wouldn't be nearly as tight as, um, you know, the Tika factory barrels are put on. But I think I'm going to use a torque wrench just because I can in this instance. And what I want to do is I want to verify my headspace again. So I have it so it should close on, should close closes on the go gauge which is what we want now the the second measurement we should take is we make sure that it does not close on a no-go gauge well i don't actually have a no-go gauge for 22250 so what i'm going to do is the old tape trick i'm going to use this particular tape this clear packing tape um, if you measure it with the calipers at least this one is about two and a half thousandths thick and I, what I've already done, you can maybe see it, is I put it on a piece, I put this um, go gauge down on the piece of tape, and then I used an X-Acto knife to cut around it, leaving me only the circle that I can put on the back of my go gauge. Now this should be my no-go gauge, albeit a pretty tight no-go gauge. Most, most times the difference, um, at least at shoulder measurements, shoulder to base measurements between a go gauge and a no gauge. No go gauge is anywhere between five and ten thousandths. I have I have a set for 6.5 Creamer that I think the difference is about seven thousandths. Um, in this case, I'm going, I want to set it a little bit tighter than that. So we're going with just two and a half thousandths. And you can see I can with just with that piece of tape on there, it makes all the difference. I can get the bolt to here, and I but I cannot get it in a battery. So I think that is going to be pretty good. Let me just before I go torquing this down, I gotta get my I'm gonna take this piece of tape off again. Remember, that's only two and a half thousandths there. It might be even a little bit less, so you might it might squish down a little bit. I'll put it on there with uh, without the tape, and no problem. Like it doesn't even like it's not difficult to get it into battery. So I think we're gonna be good right there. Um, so what I want to do now is these were just snug. I'm gonna tighten this barrel. Uh, this barrel vise down good so that this barrel doesn't move.
Okay, that's not super tight, but it should be good enough. Now I'm gonna take my action wrench, this same action wrench I used to remove the uh, Tika factory barrel, and I'm going to put it on, I think, like this. Like normally I would recommend holding it further up here, um, closer to the barrel. The problem is when I do that, I can't get my, uh, I can't get this torque wrench in here anymore. So I'm going to hold it back here and we'll see how that works. And this thing, I'm not getting super tight. All I'm doing is just by hand tightening it down. So just so it doesn't move. And now we should be ready to go. I'm going to my, um, now got it set up so my barrel shouldn't move because it's clamped in the vise. This shouldn't move because I have it in the action wrench and I'm going to be holding on to this with, with one hand while I tighten the barrel nut with the other hand. And we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to get it about 50 foot pounds. I think should be plenty. There we go, about 50. Oh, we'll go to 60. What the heck? Okay, well, that's it. Now my um, barrel nut has been torqued and the only thing left to do now is I got to get this action wrench out of here so I can run the bolt again because I'm going to reconfirm my headspace. So it should close on my go gauge, my bare go gauge. And it does, no problem. And it should not close once I add this piece of tape, adding two and a half thousandths and making this my no-go gauge. And I can get right here. I think if I really pushed on it hard, I could feel some resist. I think if I really pushed on it hard, I could force it. But I th that's fine. I mean, that's going to be, um, you know, maybe three thousandths off of off of a go gauge. And if I had like a, a an actual no go gauge that was like seven thousandths different, I mean, I wouldn't be even get close to uh, being able to close it. So that's it. Headspace is set. Um, I'm still waiting on a uh, on my chassis, so it's going to be a while before I can mount it on that and actually shoot it. But I think next I'm going to do um, a trigger spring upgrade, and we'll see what that looks like.